with us. We pray for our country. We pray, Lord, that there would be peace, that they, there would be um, leaders who are competent, who know what they're doing. Come to our rescue, Lord. Economically, uh, we seem to be taking a, a beating against all the rocks and the winds and the waves. I ask, Lord, that you would come to our, our aid and, and assist us. Be with us. We look to you, Lord. Our eyes are on you, Lord. Have your way, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, let's get into this. Uh, the gospel is free, but it is not cheap. Hmm? The gospel free, right? Nobody has to pay for it. But there is a cost. You don't pay the cost to get and be saved, but it's certainly not free, uh, cheap, as I would explain. And so we've been dealing with the kingdom, and this morning, uh, what does the kingdom demand? What does it demand of us? Everything I want to say. If you want to go to bed now, you're welcome to. You got the entire talk. But you know, the fact that we're now in Christ, we used to be somewhere else in Adam. Now we're in Christ. And this new locale that we have had some new meaning attached to all of that. The fact that you're in Christ assumes that you have been somewhere else before. There's only two places, one of two places you can be. Either you're going to be in Adam as a human being or in Christ as a human being changed by Jesus. So let's look at a text um, in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22. It says this, in Adam... For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. As in Adam all die, see, again, in Adam, in Christ. In Adam, if you're in Adam, there's a death that is operating there that will take you to the grave and to death beyond the grave. But when you're in Christ, you'll be made alive, made new. That's what God's going to do. So our location now is no more in Adam as Christians. In Adam, we were held captive. There was death, there was darkness and all that. So many levels we were held captive. But when we are in Christ, this last Adam, no Adams after that, he came as a human being, but he came from above and he died on a cross. And now, this new Adam became this person, Christ, has become our new address. Our address used to be in Adam, but death reigned there. Christ came and took the death, and now we have a whole new location. We're in Christ, a whole new center, a whole new orientation of salvation. He, Jesus, is the beginning of a whole new creation. Because as he rose, he began the beginnings of a whole new deal. It's like Genesis again, except this time God starting over with this man, Christ, Jesus. So, he is a new man. This is what Easter is all about. So, moving on. Walking, walking and learning how to walk with Christ, in Christ. It's, a, it's like learning a whole new language. It's, it's hard. It's difficult to learn a new language. It's like learning a new instrument yeah, or, or learning an instrument. If you haven't played before, you will find there are a lot of mathematics involved in learning. You've got to learn how to play. You've got to think. You've got to keep beat. Huh? You're not going to do it in one week. Some of you try to play the guitar and you learned for one week and gave it up, thought, oh, nothing's happening. It won't happen like that. It'll take a few years for you to get, you know, orientated. 
learning a new instrument or learning a new language is like that. So being in Christ, similarly, it's not easy for you to learn because you've learned a whole, lot, whole, whole new whole, old language in Adam, a whole new li old lifestyle, but now in Christ, you have to learn the skill. You have to learn what it means to be in him and to learn from him a whole new way of walking. People just think, well, you know, I, I became a Christian now. I'm fine. I used to be like this. I'm a Christian. And then they find that the Christian, don't, uh, Christian life doesn't work. You know, it's like the instrument thing. You, you play the guitar for one week and think, I can't do it. Yeah, but this is, again, a long direction or a long uh, uh, obedience in the same direction. You have to learn this new language of walking in Christ then we need to know what, what is expected of me. And you find, of course, in the, in the word of the Lord, as you read the Bible, and I am, I'm assuming that you haven't read the whole book, have you? Hmm. So but you need to read and understand the word of the Lord. Um, and uh, Facebook is not going to do it for you. You know, like a language where you have the wonderful motivational talks or scriptures. You know, this is going to do it for you. You're going to have to... How are you going to learn a new language if you just go and take one phrase here, one phrase there? Hamba buisalo ito lapa tata, hamba figa, and all that. You know, you you're not learning. You know that? Hmm? Take and come, bring and go. All, all the, you know, you you learn a language. You have to learn it thoroughly, right? You don't learn it with just fanagalo, kitchen language, as you say. So to following the Lord, you have to learn the stuff. And it's not like you have to go to college for this. No. But at least read. If you don't read, you will be ignorant. <laughs> In the Bible, it's split up into two, right? Old Testament, New Testament, right? The testator in the old, whatever that was, died. That old will came into play when the Israelites were there, that is over. But that word is not obsolete, it is available to us, but we have a new will. The testator here died, the one who, who, who made this new will. He died. And now his will is in operation. And if you don't know what's in the will, you will eat cream crackers and cheese for those of you who know what that means, God bless you. Yeah, so we have to learn what is expected. So this morning, just a little bit of why the gospel is not cheap and what is the kingdom wanting of us, what is expected of me. We used to live without restraint before, like this, but now you are part of a whole new entity we must learn a whole new way. And he has come to establish his rule and offer us his kingdom. They are not just words I'm mouthing here, by the way. You need to learn and watch, think about this. I am just like a teacher in school that won't write the exam for you, but will give you pointers, you know, and summarize things for you so that you can go and do some more of your own research and thinking and walking. You've got to live this out, right? What did Jesus offer us? What did the kingdom offer? I, I'm very always uh, intrigued by the call centers. You know, call centers. Whenever you get one of those 087 numbers and they call you, I don't know, oh, yo, yeah, pa. And, uh, and so some of them are like from your own insurance company or whatever it is you got. And then you want to hear what they got to say. And if they've done it, sometimes they've done it like the same thing. Every, every month they come with the same thing. I said, I told you this last month. I told you the same thing other month. You try to be nice. You know what I mean? These people are living, trying to live a life. You gave me that before. I'm telling you, you can't do it. You can't match the price. You know, I'm an Indian, right? I got a deal. So I have this conversation with these people. And they, and they want to offer you things that you may not want. Usually they, they want to give you that. And you know you don't need it. But sometimes you may be tempted to just listen. 
And their job is to keep you at least for two minutes, I think, before they start earning some bucks. And if you kick them out for 30 seconds, that thing, that's it. There's no, you've got to hold, they'll try to hold you for a while, you know. That's the whole deal, call centers. But as you listen to these guys, what is going through your mind as the presentation is uh, being made? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me the bottom line. What's the cost? Isn't it? What? How much is that? How much is that? No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you now. How much is that? I'm going to tell you now. We'll get there. We'll get there. I said, amen. We need to know what the cost Now, I don't know if you're so eager to find out from God. So, so, what's the bottom line? Hmm? I'm going to try to explain the bottom line for us tonight, uh, this morning. And so God, he makes us his offer, his offer of the kingdom. Being in Christ, being in Christ is a big deal. Is the new big deal. If anybody is in Christ, they are new creatures. Old things are gone, new things have come. Open for us. You know, divine blessings. The blessings of the age to come has come. That which has come, what God has planned for us in the day uh, when he comes again. That, those divine blessings, that blessings of the future are coming to us now because of the kingdom. And also we've been transferred from darkness to light. The devil can't hold us anymore. How many of you like that one? You can't be in darkness and tell the devil to go. Hello? You've got to walk away, right? But God would move you from that economy to a whole new economy in Christ. You have citizenship. You're no longer just a citizen of some country, but you're a citizen of heaven. You have a desire now for a better earthly country to settle down but also what what is in for us is that we have a citizenship with the father with god we have favor we have sonship the devil was our father before because everybody that's an adam lived a certain way and they obeyed their father the devil putting it mildly i can't summarize too long you know, i gotta get this thing to the point because you only got, you know, one minute. Uh, life's, your, 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 you know, mind span. <laughs> Citizen. So, f- sonship. You have a bigger son of a father. A whole new deal. How does, how does father, what is he, what is he, what is he done for us? What's in it for us? How should we behave around him? So, some of us want to be fathers. But we don't know what it is to be a son yet. We need to learn how to be a son or a daughter of God. Hello? So how do you do that? There's so much to talk about. That we have been partakers of his glory, a whole new deal. God is giving us his glory. The glory that he had is now in our life. The, his rule with us. So far, what we studied is all of the exposition of these blessings. We probably read a lot and you get to hear a lot about the blessings. We've been offered these blessings. This is what, what's in it for you. But the question remains, how does one enter into that experience? What demand does the kingdom make upon us? Okay, here's some words. Let's to give you uh, some starters. In Romans 10 verse number 9, it says, That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And verse 10 says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Again, sometimes when you just think about this, you think about a verbal commitment. I confess Jesus. Jesus is Lord. I'm saved. Oh, this is not what that is saying. What is he saying is that you're acknowledging Jesus as Lord. Is he? He is Lord, but is he Lord of your life? See, that's the thing. If you walked away from this other thing, you now have a whole new Lord, a, a new father, a, new, a whole new deal. 
we need to learn what that is. So you got saved, uh, you confessed Jesus is Lord, is my Lord, for it is with the heart that you believe and are justified, and it was the mouth that you confess. And the word confess is not just words, it's acknowledgement. It involves words. It's more like a, like, like a covenant, like a vow. That's how strong it is. It's not a once-off, I believe, I, I confess, and you know, that's it. No, you, you're going to have to walk this out. It's a vow. It's a confession. It is, it is words. It's acknowledgement. Confessing with my mouth says, I'm no longer going to serve there. I'm going to serve here. So if you're still serving there, as an Adam, you will find death and all that darkness and everything else still operating. Do you understand? I think we're getting through. I think we are communicating. John 20. Let's look at this one. And, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. So again, people think, when well, I believe. I believe, man, I believe. But uh, this belief here is where you're no longer there. You're now walking, trusting. That's a big word. You and trusting. It's not a once-off, I believe. It's trusting and trusting your spiritual well-being to Christ. You're not giving your spiritual well-being to anyone else anymore. You're now uh, committing to this Christ. That's what belief means. It's, it's a broad, much broader than what we, what we assume it is, I believe. You believe? Yes, I believe. Even the devils believe, Scripture says. Right? But the Scripture adds, but they tremble. They're terrified. Now, so when the Lord is saying believe, it means that you're now entrusting your spiritual life, your well-being to Christ. So, is the entry into the kingdom about a verbal confession? What does it mean to confess Jesus as Lord? And so, if you look at, if you look at for example, the message of Jesus when he, he's teaching us, I, we talked about this. He says, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. You remember that one? Even John the Baptist said that. The kingdom of God is here. Repent. So, the demand is this. The demand is this, repent, turn around, change your direction, turn and embrace the kingdom. That's the decision. If you have not turned around, if you have not repented, if you have not walked away from that, that means your locale is still in Adam. Hello. You can say, I believe, till you blew in the face, but if you have not said to the Lord, you know what? I'm going to entrust my whole spiritual being to you, my life, my well-being. Repent, I'm going to turn around, certainly walk away. See, life is made up of decisions that we make. And so we must not waver. So this is what Jesus told his disciples when, when they had to go preach. They can't sell this thing short. They can't go preach like we hear a lot today, a, a wonderful, um, cheap gospel, actually. A gospel that, that provides food, and bread and money and blessings like that. But they refuse to talk about this part, which is the bottom line of the gospel. You need to know this. So you're going to get both of it. And so he told his disciples, when they go, must preach this. Preach it like this. Look at it. Luke 10 verse 8. And he said to them, when you enter a town... And are welcomed. The operative words are welcomed. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. You got beans, curry? Eat that one. Um, nine. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. There's ten. Here's the opposite. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed... Go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this. The kingdom of God is here or near. And I tell you, it'll be more bearable on that day for Sodom 
than for that town with that Jesus at the punchline. What happened to Sodom? They were lashed with fire and brimstone. Destroyed the entire city. What is Jesus saying? It's, if they don't listen to you, he's telling his disciples, go preach this, heal this, heal the people, blah, blah, blah. And he says, if they welcome you, great. Just sit there, enjoy, eat, take care of the people, love them. But when you enter town and are not welcomed, don't sit, don't eat, walk away. Go into the streets and say, even the dust of our feet, we don't want to have because it'll be, and Jesus said, it'll be more bearable for Sodom. Imagine that on that day than for that town that refuses to obey. Hard, eh? I love your enthusiasm. You're excited. So the basic demand of the kingdom is a response. Yeah, it's a response of man's will. The call to worship or follow Jesus is not just go to church. <laughs> Only on the first part, walked in the door, wonderful. You have come into some life or the opportunity for life. Come to church, wonderful. But there must be some other center you are now based in. You must move from there to there. You can't do that. He would do that. And it's not just about believing or a confession, a simple verbal confession, but it's a whole radical lifestyle of repenting, turning around. And so one day, and Jesus um, encountered some people. Look at it in Luke uh, 9, 57. As they were walking along a, the road, a man said to him, I, I will follow you wherever you go. I will follow you. And then his reply was in verse 58, foxes of holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. What, what is he saying? Is there, uh, 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 he just started piping up, you know, standing there listening to Jesus when he says, I will follow you wherever you go. It must be, not be too in a hurry to say something. Hello? Don't be in a hurry to say, okay, I'll buy that product. I think this sounds good to me. You read a lot of the stuff in the Bible where, where people have been hasty in making a decision, and they, but their decision was based on economics. One fellow wanted the, the gifts, says, I'm gonna, I can give you money for that. Give me, I'll give you money, and you lay your hands on me, and give me that. And Peter says, your money perish with you. Those are the scriptures we should also read. Facebook will never tell you about that one. So here he says, guy says, I will follow you wherever you go. And then the Lord said to him, foxes of, foxes of holes. In other words, every one of these people, they, they got their own accommodation. But I don't have a place to lay my head. And you want to follow me? There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee I'd give you real estate. That, you know, everything would be kosher, good for you. There's no guarantee. But God does that. I talked about it last week. You seek first the kingdom, and God's plan is to bless you and add the other things to us. But there's no guarantee. Foxes, birds, the son of man. So he's asking, can you walk with me where you may not have control of your future? Where I'm going to say, uh, you need to trust me, really trust me, trust me. So look at it, verse number 59. All of this within the same context. Come out of him. He said to him, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm missing around Verse 59. He said to another man, follow me. Imagine this. He's saying now to the man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, let me go and bury my father. And then the Lord said to him, ah, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. What is he saying? Let me go bury my father. What he's trying to say is, I can't go now and do this. My father is dying, and it might take a couple of years before he dies. It might take even longer. I have to bury him. I can't give myself 
through the ministry like this, I have to wait for him to die because there's a will involved. When I get the money, I can give my time to you. And the Lord said, you're not ready. That's what he's trying to say to him. Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom. That's how urgent things are, by the way. Waiting for the man to die. No. The kingdom demands immediate, urgent decisions. There's no option. Look at it, 62, 61. All within the same context. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Nothing's wrong with that, is there? To go back home and say goodbye. But then he said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and is fit for, the, for service in the kingdom of God. Thanks, Marcus. Great will be your reward. When you put your hand to the plow, the Lord is speaking to us. He says, hey, be careful. Don't just think that, uh, you know, this is a, like a belief, this is a verbal confession I uh, you know, serve the Lord once in a blue moon, and I can give what I want when I want to. It just, you know, I'll, I'll just, God wants everything. It's not cheap, this gospel. Mm. It's a costly decision. You remember that wealthy, rich, young ruler that came to the Lord? You remember one day, and he said to him, how can I inherit eternal life? He says, well, do, go do all the commandments, and you'll be fine. He says, look, I've done that since I was a young man. He was already young, but it's very amazing that you would find a guy who would not, has not tainted his life in any one of those commandments. He was blameless. He's, he was trying to say to the Lord. Then the Lord said, you have one, I have one thing. You, you, you lack one thing. Go and s sell all that you got and give to the poor. And then you come follow me. Ah, he walked away sadly. He didn't get what he came for, which is the eternal life. Neither did he want to give up. It's too much. The cost is too high. And then the Lord said in that same context of Matthew 10, anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So the cost, the cost may sometimes be the, the affection of loved ones. You know, when a human relationship stands in the way of the demand of the kingdom, there can be only one choice. Look at it. Matthew 10, 34. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against a mother, and a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law. He's not, not saying I want to I create a fight. But I'm telling you, there will be a fight if only one person comes to the Lord. There was such a fight in my house, by the way. And there was, I, was a, I was a drug addict and my life was a mess. I was truly in Adam, really a sight to see in that, in that life. I thought I was enjoying myself. And then God began to save me. I, um, I found uh, I quit this and quit the other things. And then uh, I, in my house, uh, my father just lost it. It almost felt like that he was okay with my drug addiction. He was okay with my, you know, that life and the lifestyle. But now that I've become a Christian, it was too much for him. So when you read a text like this, you think, wow, the affection of a father or a mother is not so important. A man's enemies, he says, verse 36, will be those of his own household. And then he, this punchline, Anyone who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son and daughter more than me is not worthy of me. In other words, you're not saying you must hate your parents and you must hate your children. No, it, it's saying that you need to learn the priorities. Who is first? Is there a cost to the kingdom? Of course. It's going to cost you all cost you all and and when when whenever you uh, paid the price that's not the end of the price you'll get to a place when you have you now accumulated a lot of things that God's saying can I have that please 
I remember a few years ago, and you guys don't know anything about this because I didn't tell many people. But, you know, I think it was in 2004, we just built this building. And 2004, January, when I was sitting in my office, I was saying to the Lord, wow, Lord, thank you. We waited a long time for this. You have given us this wonderful place. I'm so thankful to you. And we don't owe the bank. I heard the Lord say, okay, take this church, give it to this other guy. I wouldn't name the guy now. You go and plant a church in Midrand. You're going to be kidding. It wasn't kidding. It wasn't kidding. So I, I pursued that whole word, 2004, the whole year. And, um, you know, I cut a very long story short. By the time I sorted this out, um, this word in Johannesburg, Midrand, we ended up with a few people that were going to be part of the church, planting churches, planting the, uh, planting the church there. It was going to be called Vineyard Santon. Hmm? How's that? Sounds good, eh? So we had some people, and uh, we didn't start yet, but I was busy planning it the whole year, 2004. And um, then I decided I'll take a sabbatical for three months, go and seek the Lord, and make sure that the last thing I have to do was to sell the house and then go. So I went away and, uh, on the sabbatical. I was in Cape Town, I think. Six months, uh, six weeks, that is the middle of the sabbatical. In one day, in a couple of hours, the Lord shut the entire thing down. One rainy day. Boom, you're not going. Thank you. I know you love me. I know you're willing to give it all up. But you're not going to do that. You're not going to Johannesburg. And don't hand this to this person. That's it. Walk away. Why? I was so upset that God changed his mind. Because I already had psyched myself a certain way. Understand? But are you able to, like Abraham of old, when he would say, you waited so long for your son, and 100 years old, you got a child. He's now 21. Take him and sacrifice him on the mountain I will show you. And the man left town like my whole pursuit. That's what the Lord finally told me what happened that year. It's like he walked the entire journey right up to the mountain. Tied his boy. He's an older guy. Tied his 21-year-old onto the altar. Wood and top of that wood. And he raised the knife. And the Lord stopped him. Do you know, this gospel is not cheap. So you need to learn what it is that is being asked of you. When the Lord would have called you, you're going to, and on, on one hand, he's, he, there's no guarantee that everything's going to work like it's supposed to, but I can tell you, after 50 years, that every time you pursue the kingdom and you put him first, God will always add to you. I love you too. You're wonderful people. God always adds to you. Wonderful. And the Lord will not stop. That was my point I was making. He won't stop asking for stuff. He wants to see where your heart is. All the time. And it wasn't long you know this one. Uh, in 2015, I felt like the Lord say, okay, now give this church away. Not like the, how you were supposed to do it in 2004, but go and take care of this church over here. Raise up that person for me, which I did and within five years. It was so, so, so hard because you had to now walk away from family, walk away from all the things that you know, and now you're in a very different community, 
doing very different things. But I tell you, God raised up a whole family there of all kinds of people. There were some serious Africana dudes that were coming into the church. We had a really a serious multicultural church. About 60, 70% were Africana in the northern suburbs of Cape Town. And we went there, it was about 200 and something people. It ended up with about 500 people in that time I was there. God blessed it. But I also was struggling because I wasn't in my, in my place. But I was there for what God wanted. Do you understand this stuff? It's going to cost you. This thing is not cheap. It's going to cost you. But at the same time, there's going to be wonderful blessings, but it's going to cost you. So a cross that he's asking us to carry is not a headache. You know, you get a headache, people say, I got a, hey, I'm carrying a cross, hey, I got a headache. A cross is not a bad marriage either. Oh, what a cross I got. It's not a bad day. That's not a cross. A cross is an instrument of death. That's what it is. It will put you away. Totally. Self, not self-denial. It's Self-denial is self-centered. Denial of self is Christ-centered. Where you... God say, you know, if you stay here and do this, it'll be fine. You're going to go to heaven. But I want you to go there. I want you to do this. That is denying yourself. Every Christian must be ready to die for Christ. It's an eternal decision. Listen to this last few verses and I'll land. In the message, I hope you got message, boy. Mark 8, verse 31 he then began explaining to them, it is necessary. <laughs> you don't have it. All right. God bless you. I want to get you after this. He then began explaining things to them. It is necessary that the Son of Man proceed to an ordeal of suffering, be tried and found guilty by the elders, high priests, and religious religion scholars, be killed, and after 33 days, Right, so he's selling this to his disciples, telling them what's going to happen. And he said this simply and clearly so they couldn't miss it. But Peter grabbed him in process, turning and seeing his disciples wavering, wondering what to believe. Jesus confronted Peter. Peter, get, up, get out of my way, Satan. Get lost. You have no idea how God works. Do you understand how maybe we're getting rebuked? We are saying the devil is doing something. Meanwhile, you... Are listening. Verse 34. Calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Must let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat, I am. Don't run from suffering, embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Self help is no help at all. See, the Christian life is not about helping yourself. Pull up your socks, get all that done. We, unless Jesus transfers you and does this work, you can try to make yourself holy. You can't. He does that. But you have to give to him, yield to him. Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to saving yourself, your true self. Verse 36, what good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? What could you ever trade your soul for? In the last verse, if, you, if any of you are embarrassed over me and the way I'm leading you, when you get around your fickle <laughs> and unfocused friends, know that you will, you will be even an even greater embarrassment to the Son of God Son of man, when he arrives in all the splendor of God, he's his father with an army of the holy angels. So God has sent his son in advance of the coming kingdom to confront us with the blessings yeah, and, and the demands of the kingdom. The, the kingdom de demands a decision today, an eternal decision, because tomorrow has met today. That which is going to happen for us, the future has come here now.
The life of tomorrow is offered to us here now. Heaven has kissed the earth. What do we do? We must surrender. We have to repent. Turn around, receive the good news, surrender to his rule. That is what God's calling us to. And I think I have one more verse I forget to say. So Mark 10, 28 says, Peter tried another angle. And, the, and Peter said to him, we have left everything to follow you. Jesus said, mark my words. I love this one. This is a promise. I think you might like this. Nice to end on a positive note, right? Mark my words, the Lord said. No one who sacrifices house, brothers, sisters, mother, father, children, land, whatever, because of me and the message will ever lose out. They'll get it all back. But multiplied many times in homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land, but also trouble. And then the bonus is eternal life. This is once again the great reversal. Many who, will, who are first will end up last and the last first. Do you understand these things? And all I attempt to do is give a summary of some of the stuff. You have to examine your Christian life. Where it is right now with the Lord. Blessings are awaiting you. I can tell you that those last few verses I read is true. For me, it has been true. When I left my house, my brothers, my sister, my mother, my everything, walked away, God added, I have so many mothers in this world. I have so many brothers and sisters around the world. When I went now to Cape Town, I had so many mothers, so many brothers, so many sisters. When I left family, God gave me a whole new family in addition to everything else. Do you understand? He will never run you dry and empty. There's no way. If you've left something for his sake, for his sake, he will surely make good. That was his, mark my words. That's what he said. Mark my words. So I'm telling you, this is a sure deal by serving the Lord, walking with the Lord. And he'll ask you for simple things, by the way. He'll start with the very simple. He'll ask you for your time. He'll ask you for your energy, your work. He'll ask you for your money. He'll ask you, give me that. Give me that. And when you, when you say, no, I, I can't do that, well, that's the end of the lesson. He'll wait for you until you surrender that. You understand? I love you, man. You know that I love you. Eh? It sounds hard, I know, but uh, I love you. I can't give it to you any other way. This is like, it's hot. And you are hot and bothered, I know. Stand, I'm going to pray and send you away. And the Lord has been pushing me around, as you can tell. <laughs> this is wild. And, and, but it's good pushing. I can live to tell the story. What is it that's going on with you? You know, you, only you know. Only you know. And the other way that I know people do it Make a line, let's pray for you, blessing of God, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. And everybody is down on the floor and wonderful, they go back home. No one is changed. No one is making a comeback to the Lord. No one is growing up in the Lord. Very few disciples are being made. Hello? So I'm, I'm hoping that you will take this and say, and go back and think about yourself. And, oh, Lord, I, I don't know what that guy was talking about today, but, you know, it's getting to me. It's bugging me. Good. If that is what's happened. I pray for you. It won't make you short. Trust me, I know. 
He'll bless you. He'll add to you, always. He's not into subtraction. <laughs> he only is into multiplication and addition. Those things he knows. And not like you and I adds. When a one plus one equals two, we say, he says one. If one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. His ways of calculating are very different. You can give one teaspoon, he can put a barrel full. You know, God's like that. God's very different. The way he brings stuff into your life. Do I look like I'm short? I'm short, I know, but let me pray for you. Father, these words, your words are hard. They're not easy. And I'm asking, Lord, that you would give us the comfort of your spirit and the obedience to follow you, to follow you to the ends of the earth. Whatever it is you're calling us to, Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, I ask, make disciples of us that we will follow you. Follow you. So, Lord Jesus, I pray, bless your people. And Lord, whatever it is that's going on with them, may they again go and examine, examine themselves, examine their circumstances and situations, and hand it all to you. And say, Lord, here is my death. Here is my darkness. I come home to you. I'm your daughter. I'm your son. Thank you for favor you've given me. Thank you that you're my dad. You're my father. And I can bring all of this thing to you. And you don't want to kill me. You, you, want us, you want me to carry your cross, but you don't want to kill me. Yet at the same time, you want to add to me, you want to multiply things in my life. So I pray your blessings upon each one. I pray this in Jesus' name. And all of us said, Amen. All right, go, go home. Thank you.